Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Source Submit and Embedded Linux Conference. Today, I'm going to talk about monitoring Linux system using the kernel's audit subsystem. Myself is Vandana Salve. And the goal of this presentation is to cover the following topics on audit subsystem, understand uh, what is this audit subsystem, why it is needed, and how is it helpful uh, in from a security policy, what are the different components of this audit subsystem framework and how does it work and how it generates the events. And then how we can make sense of all the data that has been generated as such. So before starting the session, let me introduce myself. I'm Vandana Salve, been working with Linux system for more than 18 years. I am a Linux kernel professional. I'm a Linux trainer at Linux Foundation and a co-founder of Plasma Systems. I'm basically involved in product development and training some Linux and all system device drivers and kernel. I've been working on Linux subsystems, including various embedded device driver board breakups, network or device drivers, DMA and PCI management, and some of the kernel security features. So let's get started with the topic on audit subsystem. So the audit subsystem is used to raise the level of security in the Linux system. Uh, basically, it does not offer any additional security policy. It is used to retrieve information on the system events that is happening. It provides a detailed information on system violations, which can be used to implement additional targeted security measures. And here we're going to take a deeper look at this audit subsystem in this presentation. So the audit subsystem was first introduced in the Linux kernel uh, 2.6 version, and its initial purpose was to track critical system events related to security. And, uh, to summarize, these are some of the events that can be audited or tracked, like while the process is created, exerted, halted, or during the completion of the processes, application process, um, like reading and writing or changing the files, access permissions and rewrites, and uh, keeping track of for network connection, initiating the network connections, and the changes happening to the network configuration. Even the failed uh, authorization attempts can be tracked down uh, along with any changes happening to the user and group information. Along with that, uh, the execution of the various system calls can also be tracked with this audit subsystem. So Linux audit uh, subsystem helps us, helps the system to become more secure by providing you uh, with the means to analyze what is happening on your system in a greater detail by tracking actions performed on a system. The audit records that are being generated as part of the audit uh, auditing can be examined to determine whether any violations of any security policy has been committed, and in such case, by whom it has been committed, like tracking the information of the process and the user. Also, it helps you to associate the users with the process and review the particular audit events. And it provides the mechanism by, uh, by which you can apply filters for um, looking at the interest in events. And it provides a mechanism whereby the logs generated can be stored and uh, guarantees that the, the availability of the reports that are being generated. So let's look at the components of the audit subsystem. The audit subsystem is made up of the kernel space audit framework and the user space audit framework. So the kernel space uh, framework generates the events based on the rules that are being configured. And then those uh, events are being transferred to the user space components. So you're in this diagram, if you look at there are uh, we see that is the kernel, kernel part of the audit subsystem, and then there are a couple of tools which are part of the user space uh, audit framework. Like this, uh, the, the main one of the main component is the audit German process, which communicates with the kernel part of the audit subsystem. And along with that, there are a set of tools that are 
used to collect and analyze the event records. So let's look at the kernel component of the audit subsystem. Uh, Linux uh, audit events are cannot occur uh, without the system call from the kernel. So basically the tracking requires that the system calls to be intercepted. And that's what the kernel's audit subsystem does. It intercepts the system calls that are coming from the application and then track down the information while executing the system call. So the kernel contains the database with rules to specify the events that must be recorded. Like after receiving a call from an application in the user space, if a certain event happens and the kernel decides as per the database rules that it must be audited, the audit subsystem passes it through, uh, through one of the following filters. Like there are the different filters that have been defined by the kernel audit subsystem and based on the order of execution like before, during and after the system call processing, the filters are applied and according the filters are known as user task and exit. So you're in this. If you go back to the diagram, you, you say that these are the different filters that are, are a bit applied during the system call execution, user task exit. And along with that, there is another filter called as the exclude filter. Like any system that falls under this exclude category, they will not be filtered. If this filter determine that the system call needs to be recorded, then the kernel component of the audit subsystem sends the information to the user space component of the audit system particularly the audit demand process. And this information is sent between the, uh, from the kernel space component to the user space uh, with the help of this uh, Netlink socket. And then audit demand process, that is audit collects the system call records and then goes and writes to the log files. So your, this is another diagram that helps to understand that the, these are the different filters that are being applied when the system call is intercepted. Like here, the application, whenever it makes any system call, the kernel component of the audit subsystem goes and checks uh, what are the different filters that are being available, uh, being applied for that particular rule. And based on that, it takes the, it creates, uh, it creates the event record as such. So user, exit, task, and exclude. These are the different filters. And eventually when the logs are being created, the event logs are created, they are eventually being forwarded to the audit demo. So the audit demo is used, can, uh, used uh, that can store the event messages in the log file for further inspections. The communication between the user line and the kernel line, as we have seen, that happens with the help of this Netlink socket. And this is audit this process that has been listening onto this Netlink socket. The kernel and the user line parts of the audit mechanism are mutually dependent on each other. And the, Mm, the uh, events that are being generated by the kernel component are being forwarded through this Netlink socket to the uh, user component that is the audit demo process. This simple layout lets us uh, let you effectively track any aspect of the operating system and in the event if the system is being compromised, identify the suspicious events and determine the possible cause of this uh, attack or the compromise that has happened. So now let's look at the user space component of the audit subsystem. The audit subsystem uh, works by listening to the events reported by the kernel and logging them to the log file. Like the audit framework is composed as we talked about, like about one of the component is the audit determine process which is responsible for writing the audit messages that are being generated through the kernel audit kernel interface and are triggered by the applications. 
and they are eventually uh, and the system act uh, uh, by triggered by the application and the system activity and eventually they are been returned onto the disk the way audit daemon is started is controlled by the system d process uh, so, uh, and the audit um, system functions when started they are being controlled by a configuration file uh, that is basically the audit d.conf file so let's look at how this audit subsystem is set up set up done on the system, like the audit and before we start look at generating the audit logs and processing them. So in case of an Ubuntu-based systems, the set of the packages that has to be installed to get this audit subsystem working is these are the packages that we need, that is the audit D and the another set of uh, dispatch of plugins package. Packages are needed to be installed. In case of Red Hat or Set OS, these audit packages are uh, are installed by as a standard, and as um, as we are aware of that, Red Hat is the main creator and the upstream maintainer of the audit subsystem. Now, once the packages are been installed, the audit service can be started and enabled on the system with the system control command as such. So we have to start it and enable the service and then we can use the same system control status um, uh, command to check the, uh, the service that has been started or not. Okay. So now let's look at the audit subsystem tools. The auxiliary, it provides a couple of auxiliary tools uh, to work with the uh, audit subsystem. And as we have seen that the, one of the main component is the audit daemon itself. That is the process that handles all configuration and communication with the kernel. Along with the audit daemon, there is another a set of there are other set of tools and one of the main tool that has been used basically for managing the audit daemon is the audit control uh, tool that is audit ctl so this audit ctl uh, does the work that it gives the information of the audit subsystem's current status and it has been also used to add and delete the audit rules like the rules that governs how the system has to be monitored. Then we have, uh, have other set of tools like AU Trace is a tool utility for auditing events uh, caused by the processes. It, is, it, it behaves something similar to the S-Trace uh, utility. This, and another tool that is AU Search that is a tool utility for searching the events and the log files. Um, the AU report is um, can be used for generating reports on the audit system. So now let's look at how this audit demo configuration can be done. And the, one of the main basic, uh, one of the main file that does this configuration for the audit demo is this audit d.conf file. It has been located, basically been located into the ETC audit directory. So if you go and look at the, let's go and look at the man page of this audit. It, it, it helps us to give the information about the different parameters that can be specified in this file that each line contains one configuration keyword and it has the information how the audit table should be configured for your system. And basically the values uh, depends on the size of your deploy, deployment and the, some of the key components, the parameters that has to be defined in this audit of conf file is the number of logs that has to be created, what should be the maximum log file and the space related to space configuration for storing the log, log files of the events that are being generated. Like if uh, this space is limited, then in that case, you would might want to reduce the number of log files to keep if they are to be rotated. And uh, 
Also, like you need to have information, like you should get an early warning if the disk is running out of space. All these things can be configured in this audit.conf file as such. So if you look at the contents of this, it, that helps us to see that these are the different parameters that will define how the behavior of the audit dev process. Like what action has to be taken by the space uh, coming, getting out of uh, this space, getting uh, filled up, and what to be done about the logs as such. And now let's look at how do how we can configure the different audit rules. And uh, this is the tool that we're going to use to control the behavior. Uh, and uh, used to add and develop the rules. Also, the schema is used to get the status of the audit day. What exactly it does is it controls the amount of auditing to be performed on the system. Like using audit rule, it controls like which components of your system are subjected to the audit and to what extent they are audited. Audit rules can be passed to the audit dev on uh, using this audit control command line, or they can be composed um, composed uh, together into a rules file. And then we can ask the audit dev to process this rule files. So by default, the audit dev is configured to check the rules into the, uh, into, from this file called as audit.rules. So this is a file that defines all the rules. So basically, when the audit demo starts, it goes and checks if there are any rules in this file. If they are present, the audit demo rules uh, loads those files. Uh, and once they are loaded, the kernel is aware that these are the rules that has to be applied uh, while the, uh, the auditing has been enabled. So let's look at how the rules can be created with this audit CTL command. We can add and configure rules with using this command tool and the possible options we see is like if you want to print the existing list of the rules, then we can use minus L and then minus A is for adding the new rule and minus T is for existing, deleting the existing rules. And like suppose if you want to clear out all the existing rules, then just using minus capital D suffice the action needed. Now here in this case, well, let's try to see if there are any rules currently. Currently, I don't have any rules. That's why it says that the rules, there are no rules as such, okay? So what I'll just for the sake of um, Taking a look, what we will do is we'll add some set of rules. Okay. So this is the way if the rules are being added. And um, if you go back and look uh, again, give the minus L option, you see these are the rules that get uh, added. And the, uh, the uh, kernels or the subsystem will work on these rules that like whenever the application goes and uh, uh, behaves as per these rules that are being to be tracked, the events will be generated. So to create a new rule, we have to run the command with the following syntax, like um, it takes a couple, uh, couple of input parameters to add the rule button. Minus A is the option that we have to give when you want to add the rule. After minus A, we have to enter the list. We wish to add the rules to, like we have to add the filters, like uh, the one that we have saw, seen previously, like the task, exit, user, um, exclude. So then we enter the action to be performed when the event occurs. And there are the two options that is always this enter the event in the log or never that don't enter the event. After that, we specify the minus s option where we have we can 
enter the name of the system call, the event needs to be intercepted. Uh, for like, for example, like the open, clo open close or full system call in case of a process creation. So here with minus S options, we can specify more than one system call by specifying, uh, specifying separately with the minus S option. Uh, along with the basic um, uh, options, we can also set additional filters with the minus F option. For example, like if you want to uh, add it, references to files from this uh, slash ATC directory, the rule could be something like this, like audit uh, CTL minus A exit and then you specify the option additional filter by using minus f and then give the directory name like here in this case what we'll do with first remove the directory and then go step by step adding the rules for the demonstration purpose so here you see that the rule has been added for the uh, for to be tried for this directory it is a directory and uh, uh, other than that we can also add the extra extra filters to the rules like uh, here in this case that we are adding the parameter with the permissions like with the minus f filter a uh, perm equal to we which means that uh, uh, WA means that all attribute changes and writes happening in ETC directory needs to be tracked down. So whenever there is some entries being created or deleted or some attributes are being changed uh, uh, for the files in ETC directory, they will be tracked down and the event records will be created by the kernel component of the audit system. And then it will be sent down to the audit demo to be written in the log file. Okay, and we can also add the key name with the minus K option. That is nothing but the free form text uh, string, uh, text string that you want to be inserted in the event to help identify the events. Now, how this uh, audit rules can set up being done and on what kind of uh, data can be tracked with this audit rules. So use audit rules to determine that which aspects of the system should be analyzed. And basically this includes like important databases and security uh, relevant configuration files. And if a broad analysis system is required where a system calls, uh, needs to be analyzed. The audit rules needs to be added as per the control access protection profile compl compliant environment. And the audit rules can be passed. The audit rules are then passed to the audit demo um, using the audit CTL command line tool, as we have seen just now. And uh, another way is like composing the rules in the audit dot, uh, rules file which is then further processed by the audit demo when it, when it started. Or like if you are uh, making changes to this audit.rules file, then you have to tell the uh, audit demo to reload this configure this uh, audit rules file by specifying uh, minus R option to the audit control command. Okay. Now what we will do is we will go through set of the audit rules that are applied uh, for the various system uh, objects. So let's look at the rule set, which can be basically divided into basic configurations, and then uh, what is on audit log files and configuration files, then the monitoring operation on system file system objects, monitoring security databases monitoring the system calls and also uh, looking at the different um, filtering system call arguments. So the entire audit.rules is the collection of uh, audit control commands and every line in the file expands to the full audit control command. Okay, so 
taking the look at the basic audit rules is um, this is something that this is what you will see at most of the system that has the audit uh, system enabled like uh, the first parameter basically it is like minus t which tells that before uh, uh, before starting the audit system and just delete any pre-existing rules before starting to define the rules have a clean slate and then go and add the rules. Then there is another option called minus D, minus B, which is used to set the number of buffers to take the audit messages. And then we can also set the failure flag. Um, various various states are there that set the failure flag to use when the kernel needs to handle any critical errors as such like uh, if you set the failure flag as zero silent, then the kernel will silently ignore this critical errors. And if it is set to one, then in that case, it will print the failure messages um, to, to uh, uh, panning the system or on the system whenever there is any critical errors. And similarly, uh, to know the current status of the audit gem, and we can use this minus S option. Make sure. That gives you the information that the audit has been unable. What is the flag status, failure status, the PID related to the audit demo process, and then the event logging mechanism and um, what is the limit uh, of the buffers that is can be used for logging the events. So here. This is the basic uh, rules that are being specified in this rules, audit rules, uh, audit of rules file. So minus D is delete all the rules, and B sets the buffer number of buffer if, uh, buffers to be set aside for holding the audit events. Okay, so this is the file that the audit event reads whenever the audit event gets started. Now let's look at how we can add watches to the log and configuration files. Like adding watches on the configuration files are the log files themselves ensures that you are you can track any attempt to tamper uh, with the configuration files uh, and detect any attempts uh, attempted access to the log files. So to add the watches to the various file log files, we can we can use minus W option to the audit CTL command and then specify the path that has to be tracked down. Means it can either be a directory or a file. And along with that, we can specify the permissions, um, permissions like um, here in this case, um, by specified by minus P option that is uh, to track down the accesses that happening that is right access or attribute change access, uh, change access happening to the audit d.conf file as okay. So let's um, see how we can add these rules. So here in this case, I will note it down in this um, text file, how we can add the rules using the audit control. So here in this case, we are adding the rule for the various directories. This is the, <clears throat> the rules that get added. And whenever application, any application makes uh, access, uh, makes access or changes the uh, any of the files that are being audited, then the eventual, uh, the corresponding event record will be created by the kernel part of the audit subsystem and it will be, uh, it will be tracked, uh, uh, tracked down and sent to the uh, audit demo process. So here in this case, this is the log file that has been used by the audit demo process. And here, if you look at these are the different audit events that are being generated uh, by the system. So 
So let's look at how the monitoring can be done for the system objects using the system calls, like uh, adding watches on system file system objects to track your applications, uh, how your applications are using the system calls that are, that are related to file manipulation or file content manipulation, uh, manipulation, modification, and whether that access that is happening is appropriate or not. So those things, those kind of accesses can be tracked down with the help of this uh, system calls. So here in this example, we see that the, um, the audit rule that uh, we can add by specifying the system calls. Here in this case, it is the uh, create system call, open system call, truncate system call. And any uh, system call that are going to modify the file contents. So you're in this case, any access that is going to happen on the system that will be tracked down whenever a particular system call is made inside the corner. It is going to create the event record and then pass down the event record to the uh, audit determine, which goes and write into the uh, uh, log file, audit.log file. Similarly, you can enable the audit context for system calls related to, related to changing the file ownership and permissions by tracking the system calls that those are like uh, change mode and the change owner and the corresponding equivalent to system calls uh, for uh, doing the same operation like changing ownership and the permissions. Similarly, you can enable the audit context for any directory operations, such as creating the directory or removing the directory by adding the rules that corresponds, uh, that makes the corresponding system call for creating and deleting the directories. And uh, other than that, we can also enable the audit context for any linking operation by including the system calls such as unlink, rename, link, or the symbolic links as such. Now, similarly to the system calls, what we can do is we can monitor the security of the configuration files, like uh, tracking changes to the system configuration, like the kernel services, such as timing uh, recording that helps you spot any attempts of others to manipulate the essential functionality of your system. So accordingly, you can add the watches on the cron jobs uh, configuration files, like those that resides in this ATC directory, cron.daily or cron.weekly, and also like cron tab file and then track down uh, for accesses that are being done, like if someone is ch changing the cron job files or changing the attributes by specifying this permission client, uh, parameter as minus p. Similarly, the changes that are done to the PAM configuration should also be monitor monitored in the secure environment because changes in the authentication stack should not be made by anyone other than the administrator. And then, and that it should be logged if some application um, is trying to modify any PAM configuration. So in this case, we can add the watches for this PAM configuration directory altogether with this minus, minus W option as such, okay. So here in this case, let's do and go ahead and add some of, some of the things that we have just seen it, like to add the watches on the system calls for files and directories. We have this commands as such that adds the various system calls for the file manipulation and the directory creation and the removal as such. If you want, then Yeah, right now I'm just adding the rules and then we'll go and see that if someone tries to tamper along with these files that are being audited, then the events are being gets created in the log files. So you will add the rules for watching for adding watches on the front configuration of the system. 
similar, you will also add the BAM and directory configuration directory. So as we have seen that the monitoring uh, can be done, uh, has to be done for the configuration, um, for the logging, um, as well as for the security configuration files, like uh, tracking any right access to user group or, or password or the logging databases. And that is, that help, that is helpful to identify any attempts that has been done to manipulate the systems user database. So accordingly, we can add the watches to the to these databases and the files that correspond to database, these login databases like the file at etc group, etc password or a shadow file, other login de definition files. And accordingly we can we can add the rules with it added added CTL command. Similarly, we can add the watches to the configuration file, that is the network configuration file or SSH configuration. And along with that, one of the main, one of the kernel functionality is about the time tracking. If someone can hack around their system by changing the time, timing parameters or timing altogether. So um, we can add the watches on time tracking system calls as such by the same, with, this, with the commands. Now here in this example, you see that the, along with other parameters, the minus key option has been specified to add the key to that uh, rule as such. Now, once uh, additional information can also be passed to this added rules, like to track the application behavior to a higher degree, applying filters to system calls helps uh, to focus the audit on an area of primary interest to you. Like, uh, let's look at the access system call, which checks whether a process could be allowed to read write or test for the existing file, existence of a file or a file system object, then this additional parameter filtering that uh, filtering uh, argument can be specified with this minus F filter flag, which we can use to build the rules matching specific, um, specific access calls in the format like minus F and then specify the argument like here in this case, A1 is equal to access mode. Like um, there are the different, uh, these are the, here we are trying to specify add additional filter on the uh, system calls uh, input parameters, input parameters. So the audit, uh, audit the access system call for read permission. And here in this case, read permission, that is the mode that has been specified as a second argument of the system call. So here you specify the A1 represents the argument, uh, that is the second argument, that is the mode that is specified. So here, like uh, audit this access system call, and if the mode is equal to ROP, that is a read mode, read permission of the file. So uh, only when the access system call is being specified with a read mode. In that case, the uh, access, uh, uh, the audit events will be created. Okay, so this is the, so far we have looked at how the audit um, rules are to be added for the various uh, activities as such and the various uh, system object configurations and the log configuration security databases, login databases as such. And then we can add additional filters to the filtering arguments. So basically, how does that work? Like whenever a system call is being made, like uh, system call is made, the system call gets executed uh, and, uh, it, it's when it is executing in the kernel, kernel 
then it goes through this standard procedure of execution like uh, here uh, we can uh, trace down if there is some unauthorized access item is happening to the file like someone tries to open the slash etc shadow file uh, and uh, which whereby it issues the open system call to the uh, to the current open the file then in the process the current audit component which is part of this audit system detects that someone is trying to open this file and if there is a rule that has been added for this etc shadow it will go and create the event record now eventually when the file permission and checks are being done as part of the open system call like the sa linux and file permission checks uh, are will be performed and it checks whether the user particular user is allowed to open the file in the given permissions and if the access is allowed then the audit subsystem will log the event with the appropriate uh, access that has been done and whatever the execution of the open system call all that information along with the user and the other details it will be it will create the event log and then it will send that event log to the audit demo whereby the audit demo will go and log that event into this audit.log file similarly if the permission checks has denied the access that is it uh, denied to open the file due to the permission checks in that case uh, event will be created with appropriate information that the, it, the user is not allowed, it's not uh, not given the permission, it has access denied, access has been denied, equivalent audit event will be created and it will be logged into the audit log file. So eventually you, by inspecting this log, you uh, as a security person will be able to identify what kind of attempts has been happened on the slash etc shadow file on the system activity. So here in this case, like before going into the audit event, like let's uh, see that these are the different, uh, let's go back and experiment with this different rules that we have already added as such. So here in this case, we have added the rules for the different uh, audit configuration files itself. And then there is, we have added the rules for the ETC post file. And also we have added the rules to track down the different uh, system calls all together. So let's go and add, add some more rules for this login databases. I think ADC host is already added, so we'll leave it. So here in this case, we have added the rules. Okay, so as we have seen, these are the, this, um, this is the file that stores the log that are being generated. So as in when the events are created, this file will be populated into with it. Events. So here in this case, what I will do is um, here this is the one user that has been logged in on the system, and here is another user I have. So what I'll do will go and open another session with another user called audit user. That is done, that user is logged in. We uh, should be able to see that the event of logging the new user is also getting audited and it has been populated in the audit.log so you you see that these are the different events that get created when the 
user has logged in. Similarly, like here in this case, we have added the different uh, uh, different rules. So here in case we have, what we have done is we have added the log to the spam D file where the login database stores the information on the login. So here in this case, uh, you, if you look at, these are the different events that are being getting created as such. You know, suppose what I go to is like, okay, let me do that, not from the, from this application, but I'll do it from another user that is a visa user. So here, if you go and touch the file, it is the first one. So here in this case, you are trying to touch the file, uh, the user does not have the permission. And if you look at the record uh, on the dot log file, there are these are the events that got created as part of this activity. So if you look at this particular event, event here in this case, it is telling about the information about the whether that system call that is the has been done, whether it is successful or not as such. So if you go back and this what we will do, we will copy paste it so that we are be able to analyze what, what does that mean as such. So here in this case, this is one, one, such, um, one such event that is being created. Whenever we are trying to uh, execute this touch command, a touch utility on this etc password file. So here to, help you understand this, I have uh, in the presentation another event uh, record to tell the different fields that are part of this, um, or the different fields of this event record. So basically the event record gives us a lot of information about what has been audited, what has been tracked down. Like here in this case, if you look at this event record, and here in this case, there are the information stored in the value, uh, 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 type and the value pair as such. Like here in this case, if you see the first we see is the type, uh, type equal to syscall that indicates that the records are made after the system call. And then there are other fields like here in this case, message field contains the event time in a Unix timestamp format, and along with it, it contains the unique identifier of the, um, of the event. So this number 24, 27, 24, 28, 7 indicates the uh, event identifier. Then we have another parameter architecture that, um, that tells the uh, architecture, tells the architecture of the system here in this case, uh, this value represents the x86 um, 64. Uh, then there is another parameter that tells the syscall equal to two, that indicates that it's open system call. Then uh, a, a success equal to no, indicating if the 
uh, or system call was successfully processed or not. So your equal to no means that the system call did not complete it successfully. Then there is another field that tells exit means the return value of the system call. And uh, the rec uh, record, event record also holds the information about the first four arguments uh, of the system call that A0 to A3 tells the um, what are the parameters that have been passed for this um, system call. Now here in this case, it's the open system call. Now, I'll, other than that, there are parent information about the process user and group, like the pro parent process ID, um, process ID, then the user group, user ID, group ID, it's effective user ID and group ID. And so all that information is has been recorded as part of the event record. And also it has other information like the TTY field that represents, that refers to the terminal on which the application is initiated. Then the community, uh, then COM field uh, stores the information about the application that appeared in the task list. EXE field tells the path of the program that was been invoked. As such, and the subject is uh, the field that refers to the security context to which the process has been subjected. And uh, like if the key has been defined um, for the rules that is governing this event record, then that information has also been seen in the uh, event record as such. So here, if we go back to our event that we have, um, stored here in this case, the audit uh, type is equal to system that we say then this information gives the timestamp and the event ID. Then again, the architecture gives the x86-64. Again, the system call is open. Now you're in this case, system call did not success. The success is equal to no. Then exit stores the return value that is minus two and this A0 to A3 stores the information, uh, uh, the, those that represents the first four arguments of the system call. And then we here see the different information for process, uh, related uh, process ID, pair process ID, and the uh, user and group ID information. Then this is the TTY you say, that is uh, uh, the terminal on which the process was executed. Then you see that that touches the command executed, the binary corresponding to that, the path is there. And now we, are, we don't have the key. That's why it is shown as a now. So these, this, this is all the information that comes as part of the event record that are that is uh, that has been audited as such. Even it contains the additional information such as like if there is an access to file, file system entries, file system objects, then the information related to inode is and the device fields about the device and mode fields are that the file access is happening. All that information is part of the event record. So now uh, these there are like as per the number of the rules that are being uh, added, the events get generated. And uh, based on the system load and the activity, there will be like lots of events that are generated. So how do you make sense of all this data, all these events that are being generated? So what we do is the system, audit system provides a set of tools to work along with this event logs that are being generated. Uh, as we have seen that the logs generated, they are saved in this where log audit directory in machine readable format. Now, um, uh, they can be converted into a human readable format by making use of these tools that are part of the audit subsystem package. So they're uh, configuring and analyzing the audit logs can be done with using the audit report that is AU. Uh, report tool, like uh, similarly scanning and analyzing the audit logs can be done. Scanning and searching the audit logs can be done with AU search tool. And also analyzing the processes can be done with the AU trace tool. So let's look at how each of these can be used. 
So to avoid having to dig through the raw audit logs to get an impression of what your system is currently doing, you can run the custom audit reports at a certain interval, intervals. Like if you run the audit report without arguments, what it does is it gives you the general system status. Uh, and it will be printed on the console, like the number of system users, general number of system calls that are being made, then the open terminals and all this information. Like here, yeah. if you, without any parameter, it gives the information, like what are the terminals, what are the different information and the changes that are happening to accounts, groups and rules as such. Okay. So, and even if you want the information more on the system call, then you can give the option minus S. And if you are want to give the, get the information authentication that has been happening to view information on the attempts to the attempts that is done to enter the system that can be uh, reported by using the minus AU option. So let's see like what AU gives here. So here in this case, we see the number of users that has been logged in is uh, we have the visa the user and the audit user that, that was been logged along with the super user. As such, all this information, they are been logged to the SHD and onto the system. So this helps us to uh, keep trying that what all logins are been happen and uh, all user are entering into the system. Similarly, the scanning and searching of the events can be done with the help of this AU search tool. The AU report tool he helps you create the overall summaries of what is happening on the system. But if you're interested in the details of a particular event, AU search is the tool to use. AU search allows you to search the audit logs using the special case and search phrases that relate to most of the flags that appear in the event messages. Like you can search the event logs by using the login ID or user ID, or group ID or the process ID as such. And uh, that uh, e search will give you the information as per the option that you have specified. And again, if you're searching the logs, event logs by file names, what are the access happening to the particular file and names that can be specified with the file name option. So here in this case, like if you want to search the event log related to audit user, user ID that, sorry, not Here in this case, you can collect the logs, like you can further nail down or collect the logs as such, and then go and look into the details of each of these logs corresponding to the audit user. So, here in this case, the UID been specified in 1003, then what are the different commands that has been executed by the audit user? What are the activities that has been happened for this audit user that can be tracked by specifying the options to the AU search? Similarly, we have the option of minus F for the file name, like suppose, uh, let's try it. Uh, minus five for password. So here in this case, this gives the, all the records referring to the ATC password file here, let's see. So which all users and what our process has been accessing this ATC password file, you'll get all the records related to it is password point with this minus F option. 
So there is another tool called as EU trace tool for analyzing the processes. So in addition to monitoring your system uh, using the rules you set up, you can also perform dedicated audits of individual processes using the AU trace command. Uh, this works similar to the S trace command, but it gathers slightly different information like the output, uh, which is written into the audit.log file. And it does not look any different from the standard audit records as such, but it provides the detailed information of the execution of that process. And while doing it applies its own set of rules. Like that's why while performing an audit trace on a process, we have to make sure that the existing rules should be purged from the queue to avoid that they are not clashing with the ones that the audit trace as itself. Like your the example, like suppose you want to if you run the if you do the audit trace on the date command, then this is something we should be able to see. Like So here it has a trace the uh, audit trace the uh, date command, and uh, you can get the records, get the information about the uh, this command execution by as it gives the information of what what was the PID that was executing when you launch this command, and this will generate the logs when this uh, date command was being audited. So here in this case, if you look at these are the different events that got created as part of this um, execution of the date system call. Here in this case, like if you look at if it break all system call itself, then it will help you to see like what all system calls was executed as part of this when the system when the date system. Uh, command was executed. So here you see that these are the system calls and then it gives the information of the execution of the system call that is happening. So you have to pay attention to the last line that it shows the command that can be used to even get the detailed information. That's what we have seen currently. So this, uh, until now, what we have done is we have looked at the various ways in which the system can be audited and the different kind of rules can be applied to the configuration files, log files, directories, um, and also adding the different system calls that is, can be audited as such. So there is another feature as part of this audit subsystem that um, that allows the external application to access and use the audit demon in the real time. That is, this feature is provided by the uh, by so-called audit dispatcher, which allows, for example, like the intrusion detection system to use the audit uh, key to receive the enhanced detection information, like. Um, Audit dispatcher, uh, that is audit dispatch is the demand which controls this audit dispatcher. It is normally started by the audit team and it takes this audit events that are being generated and it distributes them to the programs which want to analyze them in a runtime. So basically this audit dispatcher, it runs as a child process of the audit demand process. And then it fetches the audit events From the audit D, and then it can do it can uh, it can further be distributed to other program for analyzing them. That is run done on the runtime, on in the runtime. And the configuration of this um, uh, audit dispatcher is being stored into this file called as audit disk dot uh, this D dot file. So this comes to the end of our session on audit Linux audit soft system and how it can be used to audit the system and monitor the different activities on the system.
So to summarize this, the presentation covered what we look at at the basic, at the principle behind the audit system, the fundamental use of the audit, uh, Linux audit system. And we look at how to write the rules, read the laws and use the auxiliary utilities and how to make sense of this events collected uh, to analyze the threats and attempt on the system. So audit subsystem allows you to create and log these events and look at the logs to see like what are the successful attempts has been done uh, or who has modified those uh, configuration files and log files or the important databases. And uh, based on that, uh, the system, whether the system security has been under threat or has been comprised can be analyzed and eventually the security measures can be taken based on looking at this analysis of the logs. So that, that comes to the end of the session on audit Linux audit subsystem. Thank you for listening to the session.